Alright, hey guys, today we're doing a new video in Adobe After Effects and I will be going over how you can create these glass transparent gears. What's really nice about this is you can use this as an overlay. So right here I have it uh, over this anime character's eye. Uh, just adding this cool tech sort of vibe to the clip. Um, I know that this is also a really good effect for anyone trying to do a tech promo or something related to technology, any mechanical edits or stuff like that. This is a really cool effect because you can throw this on as an overlay and it just adds a really cool element to your video. Anyway, this is what we will be creating today. And and yeah, this was actually inspired from the D. Greyman anime uh, with exorcists and stuff because the main character had this gear over his eye I was wondering if you could create that in After Effects and it does look pretty neat. So we're going to jump into the tutorial on how to create it. Really quickly I'm just going to set up the, the background. So we're going to have this character in the background. I'm just going to rename this to background really quickly. And not only that we will require this gear image. So if you go anywhere on Google and just type in gear transparent so you don't have to worry about the background. There are tons of different pictures you can download and uh, this is just one of them from Google. And this will be used to give us our mask points later on. This is our gear image. So once you have uh, your gear image, we need to create a new adjustment layer. So go up into layer, new adjustment layer. And this is going to be our glass gears. This one is going to be the glass gear. So we're going to open up our effects and presets and one, uh, sorry, one of the presets that I did create was a glass triangle preset. So there is a video in the description that will show you how you can download this pack for completely, it's completely free. And uh, we're just going to use that to help us here. It's basically just going to give us a glass overlay, gives us magnify, sweep blurs, tints, a bunch of stuff like that, but it creates a really cool glass effect and we will be using that. So uh, I will unkeyframe blurriness and then I will turn off light sweep for now. And then in the glass gear, I'm going to hit M on my keyboard for mask and I'm going to delete this triangle mask. We don't need that here. And then I'm just going to open scale, I'm going to hit S on my keyboard, I'm going to hit shift P to open position, shift R to open rotation. And then I just want to make sure that this is going to cover, that this is going to cover my entire clip, just like that. So we adjusted those properties, uh, that's all we really have to do with our adjustment layer. And now back to our gear image, let me drag this to the top. So this image right here, we're going to go into layer, auto trace, and make sure you have current frame selected to hit OK. And really quickly, this is going to auto mask it for us. We don't have to worry about masking at all. We no longer need this image, so I'm just going to shut it off and drag it to the bottom. This is the mask that is containing all the points we need to create the gear effect. So if you hit M on your keyboard, these two points are what we really need. So we're going to select both of the points just like that. You can also just drag over like this. Hit Control C on your keyboard to copy them. And in our glass gear, we're going to hit Control V to paste. Now we can shut this off. And it will be a little difficult to see, but we actually do have the gear. It is right here. So if you hit M again for masks, we can take a look at our keyframes. Uh, right here, you may notice that there is no hole, so you just need to change your second mask to subtract. And that is going to open up the gear for you. And now we have the gear effect. It is a little difficult to see, so I will scale it up for you. I'm just going to open up these values, scale it up. And because we will be moving this around a lot, I'm going to grab this pan behind tool and move this anchor point right here to the center of our gear effect so now we can transform and move it around a lot easier. So once we have that set up we can work 
with the minor details, we have the gear. So the gear effect is here. I'm just going to move it over the eye so we can base the rest of it on that. I'm going to scale it down. Position it down a bit. All right, so that looks pretty good. So now just focusing on the eye, we're going to work with setting up the rest of the gear effect. So uh, when I was looking at this, instead of trying to mask out a bunch of points for creating the shadow, I thought it would be a lot easier if we could just duplicate this layer. So we're going to hit Control D to duplicate the layer. And then we're just going to open up our position and slide it over a little bit. So we just want to make sure that we have a little bit of an edge on either side and we have a little bit of an edge here and a little bit of an edge here. So that looks pretty good. Uh, but to really sell the effect and really show that we have a 3D gear here, we're going to go into our effects and presets and we're going to find brightness and contrast. Uh, and we're just going to drag this to the lower gear. And then we're just going to play around with this, these values. So this uh, really highly depends on uh, the background colors. So we have blue and we have white here. So how we adjust this is going to be... is going to be a little bit darker than how you may adjust it in different situations. So we do want that dark edge. Maybe not that dark though. So because we have a nice blue color here, I really cranked up the brightness. I uh, really cranked up the contrast, I mean. Again, it is completely up to you in different situations. And in most situations, you don't want to have 100% contrast. I'm sorry, this bottom one. Uh, but for this situation, I really cranked it up. Yeah, I really cranked it up there. So what I actually did was I set the one with brightness and contrast at the top. You can always add brightness and contrast to both. I want to tone it down a little bit. So now you can see we have a little bit of an edge. I'm actually going to add brightness and contrast to both of them. And then just adjust it a little bit more. So this one I want to have darker. Alright, so now you can see we have the gear. One of them really shows up uh, really, really vibrant. And then the other one is a little bit behind and a little bit darker. I'm pretty sure that is this one here. Again, you can adjust this however you want. It is a little bit difficult because both of them are on top of each other. So if you change one, it will adjust the other one also. Uh, but we have the effect. We have a little bit of a border. And that looks pretty good for now. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time. Again, you guys can work with it and play around with the values however however you want. Once we have that set up though, we will want to parent one of them to the other one. So we only have to move one. And again, I'm going to open up position, scale, rotation, and I'm going to scale this down so it fits right into the eye. Move around the position. So just like that. We have the gear effect set up inside of her eyes, so that looks pretty neat. Uh, what's really cool about this effect is you can always duplicate this however many times you want. So I'm just going to duplicate this. And this one you can just scale up and really... Uh... Really fill up your composition, really fill up your scene. I will have to position this over also. One second. And let me just pull down the contrast. All 
So yeah, you can always duplicate this however many times and really fill up your scene. Uh, the more gears you have it inside or overlapping really makes the effect look cool. But just keep in mind that if you are duplicating effects, the blurs and the lighting and all of that will also be duplicating and stacking on top of each other. So you may have to reduce the blur uh, as you create more and more of these gears. So anyway, that's looking pretty good. Now we're just going to simply keyframe the rotation. So we're going to keyframe the rotation, slide it over maybe one, two seconds. Let's go over to two seconds. And then we're just going to have this one rotate a little bit. The other gear looks really good when we have it rotating in the opposite direction. So maybe we'll have this one rotating. They're both rotating the same way. All right, one second. <laughs> this was uh, the wrong direction. We want it to rotate this way, right? Is that right? All right, there we go. So we set those keyframes. Uh, the reason we parented it is because now we just have to set the keyframe right here and we don't have to set it on all of our layers. We're just going to easy ease these really quickly. And now we're going to add in our optical flare just to really sell the effect. We'll have to create a new adjustment layer for this. Layer new adjustment layer. Over original. And this is going to give us a nice flare that we can put in our character's eye. So I'm going to select this one and just shut off some of the brighter glows so it doesn't cover the eye completely. And what looks really good if you really want to sell the effect is just keyframe uh, position or center XY. Just have this slide over a little bit too. No wrong. Wrong value, we want to have this slide. This direction. There we go. Alright, now we have the finished effect and it does look pretty cool. I'll give you guys a preview. We have the gears rotating, we have a nice flare. Again, it does. this effect does look really good for any tech promo videos and stuff like that. Uh, because you can throw it on as an overlay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I will be posting a lot more content, so make sure you stay tuned, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.